Welcome to church. You know you're in in the house of the Lord. Um, We come together because we want to worship the God who lives. We want to remember his greatness, his kindness, and his power. And we want to worship together in community as well. Um, This morning, we just want to remember those who aren't well, that in our midst, we know that uh, Bob Wilson... You'll know Bob because he usually looked after all the poinsettia arrangements when we gave poinsettias in memory of a loved one. So he is he is not well. So please pray for him and his daughters as they care for them, care for him, and they'll they tend to keep Dave and June updated so you can find out more through them. Uh, Marika and John. John just went through an eye surgery and he's had some issues with his eyes. So just through another surgery, so pray for his recovery. And there is others. I have to share with you that I had a whole list of things written out, prayer requests, updates, and then I clicked some button and it all disappeared on me. And it was lengthy, it was fairly lengthy, and so I just haven't been able to get back to it, but I will this week, you'll hear from us. And we have many volunteer opportunities, if you like. Um, There is the kettle sheets there, if you want to host a kettle, there's times open. It's just on the table right outside here, and you can sign up there. And it's just a two hour shift at the Uptown Walmart inside, so you should be somewhat warm. Um, We will have a couple of dates, other dates, Naden Band, we're going to be unloading toys here all the toys that people bring to go to the Naden Band concerts, they will end up here, so we'll need help unloading those. Um, And then there is a big, big toy drive that uh, the Salvation Army is doing with Czech News. And so people will be invited to drive through for three days and drop off toys or food. And so we have the Saturday, December 11th, to look after. So I will be just reaching out to see who can do what. And... um, And it's going to be a fun time as well as a busy time. Uh, We think of of keeping our eyes focused on Jesus. And so let me, um, we're going to read together uh, scripture. I just need a Bible, please. Revelations chapter 21, verses 3 to 6. Revelations 3, sorry, 21, verses 3 to 6. Have you got that in your Bibles? And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who has seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. So we ask uh, today that we keep our eyes focused on God in spite of all that's going on. It's so easy, and I know I... I can be tempted to, uh, to get sidetracked by all the thoughts and discussions and all the things of so many things that we're going through. But to know that uh, we know that God is, is the answer. God is the one who makes all things right. And there will come that day that it's, it's only him that will be there. And, and he is the one who matters. Uh, let's just bow for prayer. God, we praise you for your plan of redemption, which begins and finishes with Jesus. We are so grateful, God, that Jesus won that victory over sin and Satan, death and hell, and that anyone who comes to him for salvation will be satisfied. Thank you that your saving grace of water of life is a free gift and that no one, no one will be turned away. Bring, I pray, many into this truth of this wonderful gospel we think of our community around us. God, we pray that people would come to know you, um, to trust you, and know that they're 
the answer is found in you, that you bring true freedom. We thank you for what you have done for us. God, we pray that this service today will be done to your glory and your honor, and uh, you will bless the word in whichever form it comes, in music, in uh, the teaching of, of the Bible, and uh, testimonies in whatever way that is. God, we pray your blessing upon it. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Let's just sing the, uh, our opening song. Let's stand to sing our opening song, He Leadeth Me. Good morning. The band is going to do uh, an up-tempo number for you this morning. And there's several choruses that are involved in this piece. And I want you to listen to see if you can pick them out. There's one spot, just a very short spot, that says near the end, rescue the perishing. And he is able. He is able to save, able to keep. And God is love. And the euphonium is going to be playing a chorus that is not really familiar to us, 
but everybody should know. I want everybody to know that I have a wonderful Savior, and everybody should know. The piece is entitled, Seize the Day. So we have to pay attention and get the best out of this day that we can. Thank you for that uh, uh, lively piece that uh, causes us, I think, at times to remember the depth of, uh, uh, of what Jesus has done. Because I think sometimes we, we kind of look at things in just a solemn way, but I, I think our hearts need to be stirred. Would you agree with that? Our hearts need to be stirred. In, in order to gain the fullness of what God has done and is continuing to do. And that is certainly something that we often struggle with, is to kind of think about the continued peace. And uh, the gospel has never been about the past. It's always been about the today, the here and now, and, and the days to come. Certainly it is about the past, but but... But it doesn't stop there. And I think that's uh, really important for us to know. Today we're, we're talking about something that none of us need. None of us need. We're talking about patience. Uh, we're all very patient people. Would you agree with that? We're all very patient. Those of you who are not patient, please put your hand up. Good. I thank you for your honesty. 
You know, it's interesting when we think about patients, we, we, we often think about, they, they, they write stuff about uh, microwaves and how many times people pull the door open with still one second on the clock. Isn't that kind of interesting? It is to me. It means that you're standing there or I'm standing there waiting for my, you know, my potato to come out or something to come out and I can't wait, what, one second longer. And so we rip the door open and, and there we are. Uh, it's, it's so interesting, this whole thing of, of patience. Now, uh, as I've gotten older, and uh, you can definitely tell that I'm older, and uh, what I've come to realize is that my patience has gotten, Kathy, would, has shrunk? Would you agree with that? Oh, just broke my heart. She said it already had shrunk, and now it's even gotten smaller. And uh, in Spanish, just so you know how up-to-date I am in, in Spanish, that means paquito. Paquito. And there's something about how uh, we, 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 we become less patient, less patient, less patient, and wanting uh, to have things happen quicker and quicker and quicker. I don't know why they're serving dinner at this hour. Well, it's just 10 minutes later than it was yesterday. I know, but it's getting very, very late. Do you know what I'm talking about? We, we have this thing. And, and this morning, really what I want us to do is to look at some of the irritations that God places in our lives or allows to happen in our lives that test us, that test us and our faith to develop patience in our lives. Yeah, uh, I would be the first to put my hand up about the lack of patience. I'm, that's me, for sure. And what I've come to realize is I tend to blame things on other things. Do you ever do that? Where, where you take what, what's gone on in your life and it's, well, this person's fault or or this circumstance's fault or this reason I, I'm as impatient as I possibly am. Proverbs 16 and 32 comes up on the screen and says this, it's better to be patient than powerful. It's better to win control over yourself than over the whole city. Sometimes, folks, we take on the world my dad uh, was a milkman, and uh, his shift started at 5 o'clock in the morning, but at 4 o'clock, he and others went to the coffee shop that was close to where he worked, and they had coffee, and they solved the world's problems. Every morning at 4 o'clock in Courtney, British Columbia, just up the highway here, it, they would go and they would sit in the coffee shop and talk about all that's going on, and they solved the world's problem. But I guess at quarter to five, they all got up and went their own way, only to come back the next day to solve all the problems of the world. Very impatient. So how do we develop more patience? And maybe this is not a sermon for you. Maybe this is just a sermon for me. Maybe it's just for me. But how do we develop more patience? Well, the answer seems to be so simple is this. We cooperate with God. We don't typically do that. We kind of want to do our own thing first. And we typically then, you know, kind of reach out to God, Lord, what do I do now at a last resort? You see, when patience is being developed in our lives, God has a part to play. And you and I have a part to play. God's part is to provide the events that develop patience. Our part is to provide the right attitude. Wow. Wow. I think I've told you this. Uh, 
my, my brother-in-law said to my mom one time, and those of us that were in the room were in total shock. And, and he just simply said, Mrs. Burroughs, I think you need an attitude adjustment. Ooh. But you know what? The truth was, that was it. Attitude makes everything different. It changes everything. It, it, it sets us off in the, right, in the right way. James 1 verses 2 to 3 says this. Is your life full of difficulties? Be happy. For when the way is rough, your patience has the chance to grow. Wow. It says patience has a chance to grow in our lives. God uses the difficulties to teach us how to develop and learn patience. How? He uses interruptions. The first thing you might want to write down is he uses interruptions. How many of you uh, like to be interrupted? Anybody? No? Have you ever sat down to dinner only to have the phone ring? Yeah. Ha have you ever uh, been in the bathtub or the shower and somebody rings the doorbell? Do you see how it works? Have you ever caught yourself saying, I didn't get anything done today? We hate being interrupted. And yet those are opportunities that God uses to develop patience in our lives. Do you think the person on the phone kind of knew, oh yeah, this is a good time, they're having dinner, so I'm going to call? No, didn't work that way. And we see in Matthew chapter 19, verses 13 to 14, but that, that Jesus had to deal with interruptions in his life as well. And this one, in, in verses 13 to 14, it, it says that he was busy, and yet the disciples got ticked off at these little kids that came along. They said, Jesus doesn't have time for you. Move on. Move on. But Jesus says, hey guys, chill out. Let the little children come. I think sometimes we, in our impatience, we forget what's important. We forget the things that, that we're shuffling out the door, and yet there's a, a sense of importance to them. The second thing he uses is inconveniences. He uses inconveniences. A good story of that is, is, is seen in the life of Mary and Martha in Luke 10 and 40. Martha got mad at Mary because she wouldn't help uh, with the dinner when Jesus came over. Friends, usually the things that irritate us the most are when other people aren't fulfilling what we consider to be their responsibility. We don't like to be inconvenienced. You know, I often, we often do marriage counseling, and, and one of the things is, you know, it, it's been taught by the world that this is, marriage is a 50-50 thing. I want to tell you it's not. Never was, never is. Marriage is 100% to 100%, so that when one can't carry uh, a part of the load, the other carries the whole load, or vice versa. And, and there are things that happened in our lives, and, and we struggle with the irritations of life when we expect certain people to be carrying this part of their load. The third thing God uses is irritations. Remember the story of Moses in Numbers chapter 20, verses 10 and 11? Moses was in the wilderness. He and two million other people were sent or who spent 40 years in the desert. And uh, what we found is that the people were very ungrateful. Very ungrateful to God. And Moses had had enough and he got angry and he disobeyed God. And he struck the rock and his response was sin. His impatience kept him out of the promised land. I wonder... 
I wonder what our impatience has kept us out of. I wonder what blessings we've missed out on because of our impatience. Maybe something in our families. Maybe something with a spouse. Maybe something with a friend. That's how serious impatience really is. Friends, it's the little things in life that annoy us, not the big things. I mean, we can sit on a mountain much easier than we can sit on a thumbtack. It's the little things that get under our skin. Most irritations in life are caused by people. Would you agree with that? Don't look at them, just put your hand up. Yeah, I hear you. And I'm sure I didn't look, but my wife probably put her hand up really high, right? It's the truth. That's just the way life unfolds for us. The fourth thing is God uses inactivity. You see, it takes time to develop patience. And the Bible tells us in Job 14, 14, that people don't like to wait. Most of us would rather do anything but wait. But don't, don't sit still. That's kind of our motto in life. We're geared to live life in the fast lane. We use uh, action words to describe a day of life. And, and maybe this doesn't describe your life, but it, it describes life for many people. You know, they, they, they leap out of bed, they zip into the, uh, the shower, they gobble up breakfast, they gulp down coffee, and then they rush off to what needs to be done next. Do you, do you see how, how it works? We, we, we just can't get things through quick enough. And then at night we sit down and we pray before we go to bed and we say things like, Lord, I need patience. Please hurry up. Yeah. So if these opportunities are there for us to develop patience, how do we follow through with them? Well, here are a few things just before we close uh, that will help us to move forward. It's okay if you need to take it. If it's my mom, tell her I'm busy. But uh, you go ahead. The first thing is this. Try and discover a bigger perspective in life. You see, we, we often have this perspective that, that looks uh, out a funnel, and it looks at the big end of the funnel, but it looks out the little end of the funnel, and you only see the little things. And we only see the stuff for us. And, and yet, if we develop a different perspective, it means we turn around the funnel, and we look out the little end only to see the big perspective. Changes everything changes everything. We've got to learn to see things from other people's point of view, not just our own. Look at things from a larger perspective. There's, there's always more than one way of looking at things. Boy, that's a tough lesson to learn. There's always other ways to look at things. And that's not me saying that to you. That can be you saying that to me. Hey, there, there's more than one way to, to, to see things. What, what did, my dad used to always have a saying. One, more than one way to skin the cat. I didn't want to say that in case you're an animal lover. Uh, but you said it to me. But there's always other ways. There's other things to do in life. And, and we need to gain a, a new perspective, a different perspective. Proverbs 19 and 11 says this, a man's wisdom gives him patience. It is his glory to overlook 
an offense. Wow. You see, when we're impatient, really all we're thinking about is ourselves, about our time, about our needs, about our schedule, about our hurts. I understand that we're only human, but so is everybody else. And we need to learn to go with the flow, and and we need to learn to gain a bigger perspective. Wow. You see, when you stand up here and you speak, it is like, uh, well, it's like talking in the mirror. Because you're not seeing anyone but yourself, meaning me, and, and you're hearing the words and they really apply to you as well. Second thing I want you to write down is simply this. Develop a sense of humor. Develop a sense of humor in your life. You need to learn to laugh at both the circumstances and yourself. You need to find the fun in the frustration. I'm convinced that most Christians don't have enough fun. We, we, we tend not to, to laugh. It's like, oh my goodness, this happened to me. And, and uh, well, maybe you've already learned it, but you have grandkids and they're doing things and you're all of a sudden going, hey, that's just like me. And, and, and all of a sudden you laugh and you go, no wonder my kids laughed at me. <laughs> no wonder. Do you see, we, we need to develop a sense of humor in life. The Bible says in, in Proverbs 14.30, it says this in the Living Bible, a relaxed attitude lengthens a man's life. How many of you would like to live a little bit longer? A relaxed attitude says that we, we can gain that. If we stop sweating the small stuff and understand that the, all the stuff is small stuff. Laughter is a shock absorber. The Bible teaches us that if we can laugh at it, listen to this, we can live with it. If we can laugh at it, we can live with it. The third thing I want you to write down is simply this. Learn to deepen your love. Learn to deepen your love. Corinthians 13 and 4 says this, 1 Corinthians, love is patient. We, we often just kind of align that with weddings or funerals and stuff. But that's for real life. Love is patient. When I'm impatient, I'm usually being unloving. Because when we love somebody, we think about their needs as well. And when we're filled with love, almost nothing can irritate us. You know, and and you only have to to kind of have uh, some other issues in your life. And you realize, oh yeah, love is the solver of that. I, I watched, uh, we... We get these little videos all the time uh, through our, um, what do we call it, Kath? The family chat or whatever. Yeah. Get these things and, and uh, our little grandson, he's just kind of learning to walk a little and stuff like that. And, and he went over to the kitchen part of his play area. Have you noticed how kids' toys are like huge? Huge beyond huge. You need a bigger house just to have toys for your kids. Anyhow, so he walks over to the kitchen part and uh, uh, he reaches in the cupboard and pulls out all the dishes and onto the floor they go. He takes a pot and dumps whatever was in the pot on the ground and stuff. And I'm laughing. Do you know why I'm laughing? Because his mother did the same thing in our house and we had no, or I had no patience for it. What are you doing? You're making a mess. And now he was making a mess and I was laughing at it. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Let's read that one together. Ready? Go. (laughs) 
Hmm. Making allowances. What a what a strong spiritual word. Making allowances. Because we, we tend to be kind of matter of fact. And, and please, I always use the word we, meaning me as well. And we tend to be matter of fact and we have, you know, rules and, and, and guidelines and this and that and stuff. And yet scripture says to us, be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults. Because of your love. And maybe we need to say at times in our lives, Lord, help me to love these people. Help me to love that person in my life that is irritating. I call them heavenly sandpaper, right? Where they just kind of rub you the wrong way. Have you ever met someone like that? Anybody ever met someone like that? Don't look at them. Just, yeah, it's true. They're, they just kind of rub you the wrong way. They're always uh, kind of finding something. Making allowances for each other because of your love. The last thing I want you to, to write down is simply this. Depend on the power of God. Depend on the power of God. If we were to kind of go from the beginning to the very end, and, and if there was only one thing that we could take away, I would want you to take this away. Depend on the power of God. Colossians 1 and 11, the New English version says this, may he strengthen you in his glorious might with ample power to meet whatever comes with fortitude, patience, and joy. Friends, this could be your prayer for patience today. He's saying that patience is not merely a matter of human will, which says I'm going to be patient no matter what. It's not a matter of human will. You see, when we look at Scripture, the Bible is full of examples of people who had to wait. Noah waited 120 years before it rained. Abraham waited 90 years for his God-promised son. Moses waited 40 years in the wilderness. All of God's great saints... had to go, go through the school of waiting. And I, I believe with all my heart, that's the school you and I will continue to attend until the day he calls us home. Patience. It's the way we learn it. I'm going to invite uh, the singers to come and sing a beautiful song. And uh, I'll come back and finish.
nothing but thy blood can save me. There is nothing I can bring, only by faith I am clinging to your cross, O Lamb of God.
it takes me back to what Kathy said in the beginning. It starts with Jesus and it will end with Jesus. That's it. Of, of what uh, our faith is founded in, in the blood of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus. We don't like to kind of use that word because it's kind of hard for people to really understand. But his blood was shed that you and I might have life. Life. Last week we talked about how it's sometimes easy just to kind of make it through. My prayer for us as a church is not to make it through, but is to be fully grounded in the simple things of our faith. Jesus, his death and resurrection, his hope for eternity. That's what he gives to us. That's what he offers to each one of us. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that in you we find hope. In you, there is nothing that we need beyond you. And so, Lord, this morning we just pray that we wouldn't just leave this place, but we would leave this place different than which we came. Differently. Knowing that in all there is that we need and, and realize is, is found in you, Jesus. We pray this in your precious and holy name. Amen. We're going to sing uh, a thank you again, uh, singers, for... Uh, for those uh, words, for your voices, for your hearts. I, I hope we, you know, when the band plays and when the singers sing, I, I hope we do more than just listen to music. I hope we listen to their hearts, right? It's conveyed in the heart. And uh, we are our most most grateful. We're going to stand and sing the closing song, Showers of Blessings. And uh, I didn't pick it uh, because of all the rain that we've had and the flooding that we've had. George kind of wondered what, uh, what, what was behind it, but uh, there is showers of blessing. You know, it's interesting, you know, the Salvation Army has been quite active in all of this uh, process of of flooding and uh, uh, our friends, two of our friends went up in helicopters uh, this past week uh, to not just uh, help bring people back, but to feed people. Uh, our heart has to always flow through something. <laughs> and that's why we're here. That's why we're here. So let's enjoy this uh, closing song. Margaret, do you want to play a, a bar or two, whatever they call that? I think they call it a bar, yeah? Okay, go for it. Awesome. Here we go. There shall be showers of blessing. Wait. 
ladies. Everybody, there shall be Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing. Now as on Jesus we call. Shout with the Lord, we are blessed, and we just pray that uh, we would never, ever forget your blessings on our lives. And Lord, help us to understand uh, the reason behind each step that we take, that we might follow in your footsteps and be a blessing to others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.